Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Live Monday Night Tech Show. How is everyone doing out there? We've got Nick is here, Peter's here, Glitch is here, Ken's here, Tony's here, Scotty's here. Awesome stuff. Cheers, guys. Glad to have you here this fine Monday night. Hopefully the weather is good where you are. The weather's pretty decent here. It's been a cold weekend, though. A little crazy, but uh, actually it was really nice on Saturday. Yesterday was cold. It went from nearly 30 down to a high of like 12. Ugh. Cool. Scotty says we're good. Glitch says 5x5. Five five. Thanks, guys. We'll go ahead and get right into it. I got a bunch of stuff tonight. As I usually try to do. Can I get my computer to comply with me? <laughs> Viewer comments throughout, just throw them in the chat, guys. I try and keep up the best I can. We'll do some tech news. We'll do viewer projects. Some bunch of stuff from the, the community of hackers, makers, inventors. You name it, everything goes here. A little bit from the shop. A little bit of a sneak peek, and that will take us right through the broadcast. Glitch says 99 Fahrenheit there. Yeah, I would have rathered that over our 12 yesterday. Man, that sucked. Some tech news this week. Big one in the news. I'm not sure whether you guys are LinkedIn users. Personally, I have an account, but I don't use it. Microsoft to buy LinkedIn in $26 billion deal wonder where this is gonna go Microsoft getting heavy into the social game we'll see how it ends up uh, I find it really interesting though I'm gonna keep an eye on this and just see where it ends up I, I don't know what to say on it just yet to be honest a bunch of cool stuff in VR each week there's new new advancements new offerings in the virtual reality world and honestly it can be really hard to keep up Mashable actually did a pretty cool video this week. You can find it on YouTube on the VR console war, which is very much like the console gaming wars of the past. We'll see who comes out on top, but it's really, really hard to... These, these VR headsets are entirely different. Big box difference between them, huge functionality and requirement differences. And I'll be honest, I haven't been able to keep up on them either. This video, pretty interesting. A two minute video on coverage on kind of today's console war decoded. Check it out. Uh, I found it interesting. Twitter. Big, big news last week. And this was an interesting one. Millions of Twitters passed millions of Twitter passwords stolen. This time it was your fault, according to them. So according to the sources that be, uh, the passwords that are being sold were in fact stolen with malware, which isn't a huge surprise, actually. I, I would believe that over the Twitter database getting hacked, but I would believe it either way. But malware, very common nowadays, uh, scraping passwords, usernames, that kind of thing. The cool thing was uh, the availability of the common ones out there. I found this really interesting. You can find the video on the, on the Newsy channel. It was a uh, Eh, interesting coverage. We'll see where it ends up. Might want to change your Twitter password. You might want to check and see whether you're a part of the MySpace, LinkedIn, all the other breaches too. There's plenty of, uh, there's a couple of major websites that allow you to search and see whether you're affected. I would change your username or your password anyway. Big news last week. United Launch Alliance, if you're into space stuff, was uh, on hold for a little while to launch the Delta IV Heavy rocket with the NROL-37 mission atop it. What was this mission? I ask you guys out there. Throw it in the chat if you have any sources that have possibly leaked what this reconnaissance satellite actually is or was or what's doing i haven't seen much on it normally there's some interesting coverage on the net on uh, what people think it is but the satellite went up uh, massive massive rocket always neat to see these things launch uh I wish I would have been around in the days of the Saturn V to witness that, but this is the next best thing, I guess. It's all we've got. The Delta IV Heavy, just a beast of a rocket. Just monster. <laughs> Glitch said spy in EWSAT, yeah. 
interesting to know. I guess we'll never know. If they've done their job right, we won't know what it is. This one I found really cool. Each week I end up, I, every week I end up sharing one of the NASA channels. Well, this time it's the NASA Johnson channel. And this is a coverage on the Cygnus spacecraft. The Cygnus capsule is bound to return, I believe, tomorrow. I think it's Tuesday. And the capsules coming down will burn up in the atmosphere, burn up a bunch of trash and other things. But this video on the NASA Johnson channel covers some of the experiments that they're doing on board during the re-entry, specifically one where they're testing the, the propagation of fire in space. Can't do that very well on the ISS. It has to be really, really small and controlled to obviously to, to avoid the obvious dangers. Well, they're actually going to light fire to this little payload and uh, do some high res imagery and they go into the details of how they're getting the info back to earth through the iridium satellite network which i found totally interesting it's it, really good coverage really a lot of info surprisingly so actually and a spy sat to spy on the black knight <laughs> yeah uh a channel I'm not subscribed to, but I found this today, MITC Sale channel. Uh, this was in tech news because it was covered on a bunch of blog articles. Long and the short of this is you kind of need to watch the video to fully grasp, but basically they record these uh, using a drumstick to tap on different things, and they're able to provide the video to a machine algorithm and the machine algorithm then adds the sound that it thinks is suitable for that surface like in this case on the screen these bushes and plays it back and in a lot of cases a human could not tell whether the machine had done this or whether it was a real recording long story short the effects of ai and the ability to understand video just boggles my mind the the state of affairs already is a little scary in a way uh the humans couldn't tell this apart so really interesting coverage a very uh very scientific just a review video of exactly the experiment they did and you can find this on the mitc sale channel and oh, looks like nightbot looked after that williams here hey william and what have we got? If one of the mods wants to look after that, I would appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Solar-powered plane finishes in finishes the U.S. coverage this week. Uh, pretty cool. Landed in New York. I've done some coverage on the, the solar sail aircraft. Uh, I can't even remember the name of it lately because the mission's been so long in the works. But there's some cool shots of it on Newsweek of it landing in New York. Successful mission. Done deal. Very, very cool. Uh, I thought this was really, really interesting because it didn't hit as much mainstream media as it I kind of thought it should have. Very interesting. So check that out. And what else we got? Ah, Bitcoin. I had to share this. So a long time ago on a planet far away, I did some Bitcoin mining experiments here on the channel. They were well received. It was a little bit of fun. This is a shot from the last one I did. And at that time, uh, it was just an experiment, just for fun. It wasn't designed to, to make money, and it didn't. It didn't quite break even. But what I didn't really allude to was the fact that if you sit on that Bitcoin long enough, odds are the market was going to make it lucrative. Well, it did. Today, you can find that Bitcoin is at a two-year high and climbing ahead of the, the next split uh, the next reduction in Bitcoin output, which will go down by half probably this month. But at this point in time, Bitcoin is worth more than it has been in a long, long time. So for those of you frugal investors out there who bought maybe bought some up at the time when I did the videos on it, well, if you were in it for a quick turnaround, a relatively quick turnaround, you've doubled your money and then some at this point in time as of today. 
I don't get into giving investment advice and uh, I didn't go there on any of the videos and the live shows. I tried to avoid it, but uh, interesting times. We'll see where it ends up. It, it's very interesting when this output starts dropping and the supply drops off. I can only anticipate that it's going to go higher. That's We'll see though. And Glitch said rallied hit over 700 US this morning. Yeah, it's over that now. I think it's, uh, was, did it close at 800? Something like that this afternoon? I can't remember. Yeah, absolutely crazy. And William asked, what edition is that Phantom? The one behind me is the Phantom 3 standard. Cool. What else we got? Other than that, I'm going to sit on my Bitcoin for a long time community support time guys if you don't mind click that thumbs up button down below if you like these shows uh, really appreciate it share this out on social it helps a bunch you can donate live scrolling across right there uh, link is in the description or if you feel so inclined you can throw a dollar or more on patreon linked below it really helps the channel every red cent goes back into the channel thank you to those who have supported and donated makes this show possible a couple of announcements nothing new this week other than i added some more stuff to the store uh, you can find the link to the makeme.org store below i added a whole bunch more stuff this weekend hopefully it inspires some people maybe some products they haven't seen before if nothing else you can snoop around there you don't have to buy through those amazon links but it might give somebody some ideas i love seeing maker electronics all in one place Last call for the Arduino 101 giveaway. Uh, I will be doing this this week. If you haven't entered, well, it's easy. Just hit me up on Instagram, tag someone in this photo on my Instagram, and you're entered. Um, we'll talk about it again a little later. I've got an interesting idea for this. We'll see if it works out. And Glitch is thinking of picking up an S5 or two next week. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd be doing that, but... Uh, yeah, I'm guessing that's a joke. Viewer projects. I love seeing what you guys are making. Just hit me up on any of the socials or preferably throw it in the G Plus community linked below. This week, uh, Marco shared with us, he did a cool project. I love seeing these. ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. Well, these things... They're just stellar. They're just great. I, I really wish someone would mass market a better form factor of them, but hey, that's neither here nor there. Uh, he did some work using Node MCU as well as uh, MIT App Inventor to control it with a phone. And I love seeing this resurgence of the App Inventor platform. I used this four years ago when it was just Google App Inventor, and now it's finally. People know it's there and it's actually easier to use now. It has way cooler functions allowing people to make these cool interfaces for their Android phones. iPhone, eat your heart out. Educates.tv, as usual, every week. Nick shares something awesome with us. Uh, this week it was ESP8266 Wi-Fi weather display. Awesome little project scraping weather data using the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. This sub, basically $1 module now. Love it. Awesome stuff. Great little projects. Uh, except Nick actually used... Um, uh, what was that? If anybody remembers the name of that proto platform that's the uno form factor with the esp8266 i forget the name of this thing but it's a standalone board they're a little on the pricey side but interesting to see because it's uh, really easy for people to play with a lot easier than uh, most of the arduino offerings without wi-fi what else we got and Nick said, need to delete an Arduino library installed. Yeah, just go to the libraries folder, delete it. Once it's gone out of the libraries folder, it won't show up. And Glitch just checked out App Inventor. Very cool. And William said, not familiar with the Arduino yet, but I can't select a COM port. It's on three, but I can only choose COM one. That is usually a driver problem. 
check and see what is on your Arduino for your serial communication. See if it's a CH340 or one of the dreaded original chipsets. Uh, if it's a CH340, there's a video on my channel telling you how to get that working with your COM port. Or post it in the G Plus community and lots of people here will help you out. That's an easy problem to solve. We can have you going in no time, but FTDI gate, if you've ever heard about it, FTDI did some nasty things with the clone uh, serial conversion chips and that made it really difficult for people. Hence, COM ports don't show up and in some cases it actually bricks the chips. Er, hope you have a CH340. My only advice is to buy Arduinos with the CH340 on them. I'll say that now. I hate seeing bad things about FTDI, but they started it. From the community of hackers, makers, inventors, you name it, what have we got? Oh, cool. This is not a video. This is a link. I don't share them enough because this is a blog site. My bad for not doing this. So I put it in front of the list. RTL SDR blog which is rtlsdr.com website. They have an awesome Facebook page. That's where this was snagged from. They share all kinds of software-defined radio stuff. Very focused on the $10 cheap SDRs, which I totally love. They do include HackRF stuff too, which in this case it is. Stealing a drone with ST SDR. Really, really interesting article. Uh, their blog links to the main article, and hopefully I snagged it. I did. This was a competition where they were uh, the contestants were tasked with snagging control of a Sima uh, quadcopter, and these things work on the NRF modules, not the the normal. Well, not the normal like Wi-Fi style communication, the NRF system, which is very Arduino friendly and also reverse engineering is entirely possible using, in this case, you can see on the screen, they used GNU radio. Sure enough, within, uh, I believe it was day two, the, the winner had reverse engineered the protocol and seized full control of the quadcopter and was able to control it with, uh, I'm not sure whether you used an Arduino or a Pi, uh, but the code is fully linked from this article. So if you wanted to recreate this with your own Sima drone, knock yourself out. It's all out there. Very, very cool. And what else we got? channel I don't believe I've ever shared before. I thought this was really interesting. It's called Great Big Story. Each week they publish, um, I don't know what to say, little mini movies on every topic under the sun. And sometimes there's some really cool tech stuff. In this case, it was the man who escaped the Iron Curtain in a DIY plane. It was really, really quite cool to see this guy's history who actually flew out of a communist country at a very bad time in the world uh, with an ultralight aircraft that he had whipped together. And now he lives in the U.S. fabricating some pretty interesting inventions. So check out the video. I think you'll like it. It's pretty cool stuff. And what else we got? Spark Fun, a channel I got accused that I didn't give enough love. Well, Spark Fun put out an awesome video. Actually, before I start, pay no attention to the fact that it says I'm not subscribed. I am. FYI, YouTube has a pretty big bug going on with the subscribe logos. Uh, pay no attention. If it shows you're not subscribed to a channel, you are. Don't click it again because it shows an unsub, which is kind of annoying in analytics. Anyway. SparkFun, a channel I am subscribed to, very cool uh, video on making your own PCBs uh, from scratch using actual etching. And this is not something that I advocate anymore with today's availability of cheap and amazing production such as Oshpark for, for PCBs. I don't really advocate etching your own, but I think everybody should try it at least once. I truly do. I did it a fair bit years ago, and it's frustrating and messy, but it's very satisfying. So SparkFun did a very cool video on that, and I thought it was pretty cool. Well worth sharing. And David's here. Hey, David. 
Simone, uh, you're probably familiar with Simone. I don't believe I've ever shared her channel here. She does have a YouTube channel. She does a lot of pretty crazy robotic stuff and really eccentric stuff like slapping and chopping robots. And this particular video, I don't advocate how to cut your hair using a drone, but I thought it worth sharing her channel because she gets a ton of exposure for these product projects and people should know where to find her on YouTube. And that's where you can find her. And Gael, the maker of the InMove, the father of the InMove robot. He's been here several times on this broadcast. He often drops in to visit with us. Very cool ch video on his channel this week. A total departure. Uh, the InMove arm, this time programmed with Scratch, the programming language that you can find native on the Raspberry Pi and some other platforms. I thought this was really cool. It's not so much an instruction video just to show what was done by a student. It's very cool. Uh, Gael's got to be extremely proud of all the people that have taken his amazing InMove robot and done such cool stuff. And we haven't even scratched the surface yet. As more people get 3D printers, I'm going to see a lot more of these. As you guys know, I did create, uh, did print one of Gael's uh, InMove arms myself. I loved it. It was an awesome project. Learned a lot from it. And. Actually, one second. Uh, William, serial programmer, USB error fix. Yeah, that's for the CH340. Just look on your board and see whether the chip says CH340 on it. Or you can watch that video. It tells you how. And if you do, follow the instructions to install the driver there. You'll be all set. Very cool video from Freeze HD. If you're into quadcopters, aka drones, this was really neat. Six unbelievable ways drones can save lives. I think there was more than six in this 12 minute video. Uh, this was a lot of award winning projects that they've used quadcopters and actually uh, like large scale 700 or bigger RC helicopters converted to autonomous uh, control or lack of control for uh, dropping life preservers, dropping rafts, uh, surveying scenes. Very, very cool projects. It was really, really awesome. Well done. I really enjoyed this. And what else we got? Shapeways, a channel I'm not subscribed to, but this is where you can find an interesting contest. So you guys know, Shapeways has a contest going on right now for 3D printed designs for the DJI Phantoms. I think it's not limited to the Phantoms. I think it's all DJI quadcopters. If you design uh, anything, a 3D printed printable item that can be used in search and rescue, fire, EMS type roles, you submit it to them. I guess you probably surrender control of the design, but you're put in this contest for, I think, one of four Phantom Four quadcopters, and I think it's $1,000 credits to Shapeways 3D Printing out of New York. Very, very cool. Uh, if you guys are interested, the video is on the Shapeways channel. Lots of cool applications. It's going to be interesting to see because the DJI quadcopters are so common out there. It'd be interesting to see what people make out of them. And hey, who doesn't want a brand new quad or a thousand bucks credit to 3D printing? Go for it, guys. So check it out. And <laughs> had to mention it. Colin Furza hit 3 million subscribers. And as he said he would, he did the firework Death Star video. Absolutely bananas very very interesting video if you like fireworks and just a lot of insanity can't go wrong with colin's channel totally totally cool and what else we got zach Fredin, he was here on the live show uh, a few months back i had him as a guest he did the neurobites projects. Well, now he has another uh, Hackaday IO project. You can find it. It's called the Blinktron Ecator. 
And this is a little USB device with a bunch of LEDs on it, a bunch of RGB LEDs. And I thought this was really cool. You should check out Zach's video and subscribe to his channel and throw him some love. This thing, even a tiny little USB device, I truly didn't think much of it until he broke out the fact that it has persistence of vision built into it as well as multiple modes of LED control. Really neat little project. I thought it was really cool. Good job, Zach. And would you ever implant an RFID chip in your hand? No, I would not. Copenhagen Suborbital is a channel I've shared here numerous times with good reason. These guys out of Denmark are doing amazing things with full-scale rockets. Uh, these guys are true contenders to, well, the one step below SpaceX, maybe a couple steps below. These guys are making massive rockets with fully everything's made in-house it just blows me away they did a video on the parachute system of their newest rocket pretty cool stuff it just you got to see these guys videos these guys are, work out of a small machine shop in denmark nothing too crazy in the product they're building and it's just totally cool it's amazing it just blows me away every time i see one of their videos and nick said are you going to talk about the hacksmith's first successful flight I actually forgot to include a slide for his flight uh, video, uh, but congratulations, thank you for reminding me. Congratulations to James the Hacksmith. He did hit half a million subscribers uh, today, I believe. I spoke with him Friday night just via text message. I, I shot him a message when I saw his, uh, his latest video and wanted to check in, see how things were going. It's going well for him. He's having a lot of fun. So cheers, James. Congrats. Uh, guys, check out the Hacksmith channel. I don't have a slide on it because I totally missed the boat on that. And Peter said you should enter your gas detector for the DJI competition. It crossed my mind momentarily to do like a deployment device for that, but their intent is the 3D, they're a 3D printing company, so their intent is the device hooked to the quad, um, not something deployed from there. I'm sure it could include that, but yeah, thanks for the suggestion. Very much appreciate it. Thanks, Peter. And... Come on, come pooper my computer's catching up interesting video this one's not directly tech related but because there's so many people that watch this channel that are youtube creators i like throwing these in when i can basic filmmaker a channel i've been subscribed to for a long time uh interesting video really basic seven minutes of the things that you probably just won't think of if you're if you're into video creation or starting out in youtube check this video out top 10 video f-ups you need to avoid some of it may seem really basic but they are truly the lessons that I had to learn the hard way and took me a long longer than it should have to learn them. My videos are I've got a long way to go, but uh, a lot of the good suggestions in here. Check it out guys if you're into if you're thinking about making videos of any form. Also, you should just be making videos. Don't don't hold back. I think everyone should try making some videos and sharing with the world. It's a fun fun hobby. And William, I'm confused what the contest is. Yeah, that's why you should go to Shapeways and find out. From the shop, last week's video was the basics of breadboarding, and it was really well received. Uh, thank you to all of you for the kind words on that. I decided, as I mentioned a few times now, I'm trying to do some a little bit of throwbacks to some basic tech videos and tech projects, which I, so many of them. So uh, I hope it was well received. Thank you for all the kind words. It was a lot of fun. Just, just a fun little get back to basics video. A little sneak peek. I don't have slides on it, but as we mentioned earlier, I have the uh, Arduino 101 giveaway this week. Uh, enter so you can get it, it's free. 
I wanted to do something creative to give it away, and I think I've decided that the video upcoming will actually, we're gonna let the machines decide. I'm gonna do an Arduino lottery machine, basically basic Arduino AI to decide the winner of that project. What could be more fitting than to have an Arduino give itself away? So uh, it'll pick the winner. I have an idea for the video, and it should it should come out all right. We'll see. And that is pretty much that i think we're right on time cheers guys that is the extent of the pre-made stuff scotty said i still use the global specialties breadboard i bought in 75 when starting at ryerson very cool that's awesome. Yeah, that's one cool thing about breadboards. If you uh, don't melt them or damage them, they last basically forever. And yeah, it's just gotta gotta play with them. Make projects so much easier. That, as I mentioned before, guys, we are throttling back the time on these broadcasts a little bit, and that brings me to some closing thoughts. I wanted to share a few things with you guys, and we've got the time. I found an interesting video this week. You guys should check it out. As many longtime viewers of me know, I've mentioned Microbe before in the past during some rants. A guy I truly love and respect. The guy speaks the truth. Uh, awesome video on PragerU YouTube channel on uh, it's Mike Rowe's little spiel on don't follow your passion. And if you guys haven't seen his talks before, uh, basically Mike preaches about, not preaches, it's a bad word. Mike speaks often about the value of hard work and the fact that a lot of work in the world is down <laughs> It's <a> glitch. <laughs> scared me <laughs> oh, awesome live donations gotta love them cheers glitch and stream tip supports three point precision <laughs> no it, close enough <laughs> oh thanks i'm gonna tell you guys a little story you guys can check out the micro video but i'll tell you a little story instead of talking about him so long time ago in a galaxy far far away i was a teenager once and instead of going off to college i entered a trade and as some of you know and some of you don't know i took on a trade in the automotive industry i became an automotive technician which didn't come easy it was a it's a long time of an apprenticeship dirty work hard work and i learned more than i ever thought possible in that trade i I don't want to downplay people from going to college because I think if you have the option, you definitely should. But I think it's drastically understated the value of going into trades. Skilled trades are one of the largest gaps right now. There's so many openings for very well paying jobs that people aren't filling. There's still people chasing their degrees instead of going into the trades. I understand the media has downplayed this for a long time. Back back to my story after spending 10 years in the automotive trade i gathered quite a bit of quite a bit of certifications i had this out today these are basically my night school certs and some of my current certifications basically a whole bunch of diplomas in different areas i got certified in in the automotive industry i went heavy into diagnostics into doing a lot of at that time was black box stuff the cars had just become computerized i worked on carburetors back then i'll rebuilt more of that stuff than i care to remember but i specialized into the diagnostics area which lent itself very well when i transferred into the wind industry and i was a bit of a grease monkey in that industry too but i transitioned very quickly the the skills that that i learned in those trades stuck with me and I was able to excel pretty good in the in the wind industry and wind turbines and stopped wrenching on them, started directing a lot of people, then went into a tech support role. Now I do a lot of the software that runs the turbines worldwide, all starting 
without a college degree. I'm not saying I have the best career in the world, but I think it's drastically understated how the how much valuable getting trade work and and starting off in the trenches, the physics and the the troubleshooting I learned in those will be with me for a lifetime. So that's my little story that not every follow your passion but don't let it lead the way when there's something if there's a job right in front of you in a in a skilled trade uh definitely don't look down on it because uh it can lead crazy places uh little little debenture but back to if you watch any of mike rose uh, interviews and some of his own um uh causes he has a, a couple of not-for-profit companies and a couple i think for-profit companies uh he often preaches the value uh, of trade work and skilled labor and i just wanted to say long story short i wouldn't be where i am today without where i started and i'm super glad i picked the path i did because if i would have went down a different path i don't think i'd end up near as happy as where i am uh, definitely not the best career in the world, but I get to hang out with you guys on Monday nights, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, works good for electronics. The troubleshooting I learned in the back underneath cars and dealing with it, the basics never change. Troubleshooting faults is troubleshooting faults. It's uh, pretty fun stuff. And David said, stop by a quick cheers, David. And best to do something you enjoy then you get to go then you get to go to work instead of having to go to work yeah very very true definitely it's funny though you can learn to enjoy things i did enjoy where i started early on but it quickly became pretty tough work and you can learn to enjoy it to some degree um yeah it's an interesting it's an interesting evolution work funny stuff anyway guys i am going to head out cheers guys have a great night hopefully you guys have a fantastic week make something cool this week check out some cool videos on youtube and we will see you friday cheers